Hi, this is BK from ManForWars.com, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents worldwide offline uh, teach their kids to look, talk, and feel great, and to help people worldwide offline locally discuss and share what they find online as better people making better places to live, getting better, better politicians and better results because you put better ones in or you get better out of the people you currently have because you know more and you demand more as opposed to just accepting whatever you get. So see manforwars.com or the description below for more of what to do about what's going on today as well. And on that, um, I've got here a uh, COVID-19 planned emic. Communist Canada government wastes taxpayer money on glossy garbage. COVID-19 pandemic. Communist Canada government wastes, wastes taxpayer money on glossy garbage, right? And what do I mean? Well, I'm in Toronto, Canada, right? And uh, and 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 I I got I checked my mail, right? Still allowed to get mail, and Patriots can beat junk mail. Uh, see below for for more on that because I could do a hell of a lot better than this piece of shit I got in the mail. But uh, you know, basically the Communist Canada government. Uh, is wasting their money on glossy garbage. And I got this, right? COVID-19. So I'm going to show you um, what I think of this glossy garbage, right? It's glossy, it's shiny, might have cost a couple of bucks each. You know, I could make, uh, I could make for 10 cents a page, 10 cents a plain black and white page, uh, say eight or 10 copies per page. I could make eight or 10 of these for 10 cents. That can do eight or 10 times as much good than this glossy piece of shit and wasted taxpayer money that costs maybe two dollars each or three dollars each or five dollars each or it's, it's it's not their money it's taxpayer money they can spend whatever they want maybe they got some cozy agreement with the printer but here it is shiny glossy you know and so i'll go through kind of what this says right so it says first of all covid19 coronavirus right now this is an illustration of the virus it's meant to look scary Right now, typically there's something called Cox postulate where they isolate the virus to prove that there really is a virus there. There's not just other genetic material or related ge genetic material. And that plus symptoms means that you score on the test that you have the virus. And some viruses they supposedly have isolated, many they have not. And they just go with, uh, with, um, a, a photo with, with uh, illustrations or photographs of other generic sort of biological material. Um, and so on. But this is not the actual coronavirus, right? Because they have not isolated it near as I can tell. I've seen a couple of articles where they say that, but uh, but there hasn't been much about that since. And so I think those are probably fake, right? I want about a Toronto doctor that supposedly did, you know, sort of midway through the early stage of this crisis or, you know, fairly early on in this crisis, another one from a European doctor, but they don't bring it up much. So this is meant to scare us. This is meant to show up in your mailbox and go, that might eat you right? When they don't even know that much about that. And if it's that deadly, then how come it doesn't kill people? How come 104-year-old World War II vets survive and a whole bunch of other people do, and yet other people supposedly super deadly, and yet you might have it, and then you might not have any symptoms, and yet you shouldn't go near, near anyone because you might kill people. It just makes us all super paranoid, right? So there's a lot of questions around this. I'm not saying it's totally fake. It's totally this. There's different schools of thought on that, but it's definitely being overblown for control, and this type of propaganda is part of that. It says here, you've been asked to stay home, dot, dot, dot. Now what? A guide to social distancing and self-isolation. So, you've been asked to stay home. Now what? Now what does ask mean, right? I don't mind. People can ask me anything. If we respect each other, then of course, you know, if not, then no point in listening, right? Don't lose yours. Don't take anybody else's. No respect. No problem. No solution. Nobody there. No big deal, right? But if you respect each other, you can ask me anything, but then I can do anything I want as a sovereign man on the land, right? Um, and, uh, and yet you've been asked to stay home, dot, 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 now what? So if the asking doesn't work, is this order? You know, is this asked to stay home? And then say, we asked you, but since you didn't, now we're ordering you. Or because you didn't, now we're fining you or arresting you, right? What does that mean? Um, and, and our rights, you know, are very important, especially during a crisis, because that's when they're often taken. Uh, and at this point, they've been taken because of this crisis. And so that's an issue in countries around the world. And this is part of that. This is a guide to social distancing and self-isolation, right? 
Now, this is very much social distancing is a new hot term, stay away from people, very much a divide and conquer strategy. People already having trouble respecting each other and communicating well offline, now mostly have to do it online. And online, it gets all screwed up as socialist media, uh, you know, turns us into AI bots with AI bots until we're speaking in little short, you know, blurts, you know, not talking like humans in full sentences. There's still a thirst for that, hence the popularity of podcasts and long form YouTube videos and interviews and so on. But among most people, the style is to kind of talk in shorter and shorter sentences. Don't use paragraphs. Don't use sentences. Don't use full words. Just use acronyms. Just use emojis until you are an AI bot talking to other AI bots. Um, and, and that either means people who are also like AI bots or real AI bots where you can't tell the difference. So that's an issue, right? So a guide to social distancing and self-isolation, right? And this is basically going to make people stressed and depressed and confused and paranoid. Knowledge is power. Stress weakens your immune system. You're definitely going to get flu-like symptoms, just like every time you're stressed out and you're immune and your nose starts running and you get a headache and that's how you get uh, the flu and the cold, right? Your body starts breaking down, your white blood cells start cleaning it up, and then you blow out the sort of excess material into a Kleenex. Right. So um, social distancing, you know, stay away from people, you know, don't go near each other. Uh, don't see your family, your friends anymore. Right. The U.N. has just talked about coming into people's homes because people staying at home might be infecting each other. So they got to check your temperature and maybe quarantine different you know, people. And that whole process could be corrupted because it's all what, what about the tests? What do the tests say? How reliable are the tests? There's been all sorts of questions about that. Um, and, and certain countries like Sweden didn't do anything. They're having the same results as, uh, as people that have done a total lockdown, quarantine, destroy their uh, uh, rights and freedoms and cultures and economies, right? Taiwan, you know, um, same thing. They didn't do that. They didn't shut everything down. They're like, screw this, right? China's back to work within 30 days, a couple of months. And you can't really trust a lot coming out of communist China. Um, but, um, you know, the, the, a, lot of, a lot of times it's just the same thing. Or they're letting uh, prisoners out of jail because it's not safe for prisoners to be in jails near each other uh, because they might catch COVID-19. But it is safe for people to be in apartments and condos. So it's safe for people to be in apartments and condos. You know, thousands of people in apartments and condominiums. They have to stay home, breathe the same air through the same circulation system, right? Uh, you know, maybe crack a window once in a while, go out for an hour a day like every other scumbag, serial killer, murderer, child human trafficker, rapist, whatever. They, unless you execute them, they typically get one hour a day to go outside, get some cardio, get some sun, and then get back in the hole because otherwise they're a bigger drain on the prisonplanet.com healthcare system, bigger drain on the infirmary. They cost the system more money. So if you're going to be in jail for life and, uh, and, and you've just done the worst things in the world, typically you still get an hour out, right? Just to make sure that you don't get sick and they have to, you know, waste more time and money on your ass, right? So, um, so, you know, when it comes to this, you know, it doesn't make any sense, right? Where prisoners get let out uh, and they're talking about hardcore prisoners. There are people accused of awful things, murder, rape, whatever. They're getting let out, especially in liberal areas with liberal politicians that are more big government status. They want problems to get worse because then you need more government. So you need more of them and they get more money, power and control over everyone. And this ain't the old boss hog style corruption where there was some, you know, crooked uh, mayor or crooked sheriff or crooked judge that just wanted to get bribes, but still want to live in a nice place. They want to go to Applebee's. They want to go to the racetrack. They want to go to the ball game, right? This corruption is globalist, super rich, evil people that want to weaken people and countries and destroy national sovereignty so they can fold them all into a global governance structure. And they want to use Chinese style control systems that they practiced on those people who also try and fight back against communist China, including people in China and people like Hong Kong adjacent to China who try and fight against China. They're trying to bring those control systems worldwide, right? So, um, so especially in liberal areas, you know, they're definitely, you know, looking to make this problem worse. They're using ventilators wrong, according to New York doctors and others, uh, because they're diagnosing this problem wrong. And the ventilators, if they're hooked up to you and, and, and trying to, you know, work with your lungs to help you breathe, if they use them wrong, they will pump too much air in, they will shake your lungs to bits and they'll kill you that way, right? Whereas if they diagnose it correct, you know, maybe they don't need a ventilator or they can use it correctly, but this is happening. Plus coronavirus deaths, if you get hit by a bus, 
but you have some coronavirus in you, they might still say you died of coronavirus or with coronavirus-like symptoms or however they carefully use the language to kind of code that. Um, and, and then uh, they can count it as a coronavirus death. They can get more money uh, as a result of this coronavirus pandemic. So there's, there's corruption of the medical system as a whole. And I've walked around. I've got six videos um, over three days in the Toronto Healthcare District, April 3rd, 6th, and 7th, um, at lunchtime and at rush hour time. And it's empty. It's quiet right? It's dead. There's not even a vibe of tension in the air, right? There's still some, a lot of parking lots empty. There's still some people there and there's still some people doing good work, but most people are at home. So they're normally not falling off ladders at a construction site or getting hit by cars and whatever, whatever, whatever. So the normal influx of people that are, that are getting injured or sick aren't coming in. And then the massive influx of supposed COVID-19 patients, they aren't showing up there either. It's very dead, very quiet. Saw a couple of doctors outside of my walk, a couple of nurses, they're just chilling, right? Um, and there's videos like this from all over the world. So when it comes to a guide to social distancing and self-isolation, it appears to be divide and conquer. And en français, if you want to speak French, of course, they have it in French as well even though most people in Toronto don't speak French, and if they do, they probably definitely speak English, but hey, you know, it's, it's, it's English on this side, French on this side, glossy, you know, whatever, right? So it's not, it's just glossy garbage, right? And that doesn't even get into the glossy garbage, right? I'll get into the glossy garbage here, right? You know, or that's just the beginning of the glossy garbage. It says here, all Canadians have been asked to practice social distancing, block capital letters and uh, bold print to limit the spread of COVID-19. So there you go. All right, so this is a central government communist Canada solution mirroring sort of communist China solutions with respect to quarantining, right? Um, and they are making that clear. Social distancing. What does that mean? It means you can't get together. You don't have the right to free speech. You don't have the right to free assembly. You don't have the right to petition for grievances. You don't have the right to organize people uh, of similar interests for a protest or an offline information war campaign, meetings, meet and greet tables, posters, flyers, get out there, inform the neighborhood. Don't just yell, we're really mad. We already know. Let other people know what you're making a racket about. So you don't just make a racket. You also make sense to them, right? All that stuff is shut down right now. Um, and, uh, and, and across Canada and around the world, right? And, and this is happening in countries all over the world uh, as part of a globalist agenda, super rich evil people trying to use uh, the global governance structures like the UN and World Health Organization to run the whole world, right? And they shouldn't be making any policy. They should at most be a Starbucks where leaders get together and talk, but they shouldn't be dictating the whole world. But apparently they are, and they want the whole world to look like communist China, exporting that way of life to everyone because it's the best way to control everyone. Um, and, and so on. So that's an issue. Um, and then, so it says here, all Canadians have been asked to practice social distancing to limit the spread of COVID-19. That means, number one, stay home and work from home if you can, right? So that's it. Stay home and work from home if you can, block capital letters. Number two, limit the number of people you come into close contact with. Don't connect with each other. Go on the internet, watch some videos, go on Netflix, watch an old Game of Thrones uh, video, right? Shop for essentials during off hours. Try and go off hours uh, so you're not too near other people where you have to shop, right? Now, and again, this is this is either, this is not super deadly. Uh, you could be asymptomatic, but each one of us is a ticking time bomb, right? I'm perfectly fine, perfectly healthy, average height, average weight, average build, badass dude, right? And you know, whatever, I'm good, I'm good. But you gotta be paranoid. Even though I'm not looking sickly, I'm not looking like some crazy homeless guy with tuberculosis <laughs> gets on the subway, everyone goes, Ugh, yeah, you know, moves away from him, right? No, but still, you got to be paranoid about me. I got to be paranoid about you. We got to be paranoid about each other. We got to wonder if we could ever see each other again until they've got antibodies tests, vaccines, microchips, you know, you get updated on, on whether or not you're still healthy, are you still asymptomatic, all that process could be corrupted, really is totalitarian control systems, you know, at the heart of it, certainly corrupting that process, um, and, and so on. And yet, what can you say? We're in communist Canada now, right? What, what can you say? What can you do, right? Especially with, with, with you know, Trudeau's uh, miserable, weak line, bitchy men, uh, uh, liberal government uh, uh, cronies, um, you know, behind all this, getting more power, feeling more important, and yet talking to us like we're children, talking to us like we're children, 
right? Trying to turn us into children. Now we're, we're, we're smarter than that. And then world famous polite Canadians not acting polite enough to talk anymore and, and, and or let anyone else. Uh, and then uh, if, if we're not, you know, stupid, we're just quiet. Eventually, if we can't talk and we can't respect each other and communicate well and teach kids to, then of course we get stupid, right? And there's still some stuff on the internet, but what if they limit the internet, just like they're limiting everything else when it comes to food shortages, supply lines breaking down, long communist Canada bread lines, the grocery store getting longer every week, you know, all that sort of thing. So those are the three main tips that they suggest, right? And then below that, it says here, if you go out, if you go out, number one, avoid crowded areas and groups. Uh, and then next, maintain a two meter distance from other people, about six and a half feet, right? Number uh, three, cough or sneeze into your elbow. Number four, wash hands thoroughly and frequently. Number five, greet others with a wave. No more handshakes, no more hugs. You people who used to be humans, who used to connect, respect each other, nice to meet you. Firm handshake, no wet noodle great, right? Or with a lady, yeah, lift her up a bit, you know, relax, you know, delicate, whatever, right? Um, you know, uh, uh, no more hugs, no more, hey, great to see you, hug, oh yes, you know, great to see you, show we like each other, you know, uh, our body's electromagnetic fields connecting, you know what I mean, appropriately, you know, whatever, homie hug, what's up man, you know, whatever, no, no more acting like humans anymore, right? Not under communism, where we're not supposed to be humans, we're supposed to be serfs, and, uh, and basically uh, just slaves uh, advancing the giant communist agenda. So they got to get rid of God and family and gender and, and culture and everything that humans liked, that made us humans, that made us stronger, that made us uh, connect better with each other and more able to organize and, 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 and get better politicians and better results. No, gone, right? Um, and, uh, and, and, and so um, it says here, if you are feeling unwell, have returned from a trip or have been exposed to someone who has returned from a trip, you must self-isolate, block capital letters and uh, and so on, right? Which, you know, you, you might have some agreement with. I, I totally understand. Some of these things might be reasonable based on our general understanding of a possible deadly pandemic, um, especially if you come from overseas and you might be bringing something we don't want to spread everywhere else, right? But, you know, at the same time, it, it's taken too far, it's going too far, and it's just leading to not ending. It's not like, okay, we took two weeks off, now what? Well, now it's two months. Okay, we'll take two months. Actually, we're thinking maybe six months. You know what? Everyone, even if everyone looks perfectly fine, everywhere you go, they secretly could have something that could kill lots of people. They could be asymptomatic. So, well, how deadly is this damn thing? If it doesn't make me sick, doesn't make anybody else sick, then why the hell we have to worry about this shit, right? Except for the people that are really old, already have underlying health conditions, and, and then, you know, the normal flu will get them. A normal pneumonia will get them, right? It's not even a special magical deadly flu, because if it was a magical deadly flu, we'd be a lot sicker, right? It wouldn't, we wouldn't just be asymptomatic carriers of something that could kill everybody, right? Um, so there's a lot of bullshit involved in this, right? So stay away from people uh, until you are well, even if symptoms are mild. Take a self-assessment test to see if you need to seek care at toronto.ca slash COVID-19. Do not visit a clinic or hospital without calling first, right? Now, why is that? Do they not want you to see it's empty, right? A lot of places around the world, they go to testing centers, nobody's there. Even if the media the day before, or even a few hours earlier, or even just before, says, this is crazy, people are working like crazy, the hospital staff are overburdened, they're working 18 hours a day, right? I saw some uh, brown doctor on the CBC in a little short news clip, he talked about how we're working 18 hours a day, I pulled over on my car on the way home and I just started crying. I go to the same damn Toronto uh, hospital district, empty, quiet, dead, right? Emergency dead, right? I didn't walk around everywhere. I was walking around outside, parking lots, back, just the whole district, you know, a few different times. And uh, it's very quiet, right? And people outside, you know, chilling, right? You know, coming out for a breath of fresh air or whatever, right? Looking confused, scratching their heads, going, what is this, right? We were all supposed to go along to, to be part of the whole response to this, but what actually is this shit, right? Um, so finally, it says here on the uh, on the inset uh, of the first page, it says, whether you're practicing social distancing or you're in self-isolation, remember to take care of yourself, right? It says here, stay healthy by eating well, drinking water, staying active if well, and getting enough rest. Connect with loved ones virtually or by phone. No more human connection, everything over technology, you stupid AI robot slaves. 
you know, you, you like your Siri, you like talking to your Google Home Assistant, we're going to turn you into one of those damn things, right? And then call your local distress center if you need professional support. Oh, you're feeling suicidal because you lost your job, don't know how you pay rent, don't know how to eat because of this damn flu, you know? Um, yeah, well, call your local distress center, right? So that is the advice from this glossy piece of garbage. Right, and there it is. There it is. And there it is. And that's that. And then on the back, it says here, Association Medical Canadien, or Canadian Medical Association, and Ontario Medical Association. And it says here, COVID-19 symptoms to look for, right? Symptom de la COVID-19 a sauver. It says here, fever, cough, difficulty breathing. For more information, visit cma.ca, covid, canada.ca, coronavirus, virusfacts.ca. Wow, look at that. Now, with respect to this, right, and it says here, right, with respect to this whole thing, right, they've been working on this. I just got this in the mail. I just checked my mail yesterday, uh, April 9th, so it might have been here sometime this week, right? They've been working on this for like three months, right? Three, at least three months, right? Say they took it seriously two, three months ago, right? Um, and these are the massive resources of, of the government, right? They can't afford to print and send these to everybody. And these are not cheap, these expensive things. If you ever try to print something in color and glossy, you'll see these cost you at least a buck, two bucks each, right? Um, but, 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 but if you listen to someone like Dr. Shiva Ayadurai, uh, Shiva and S-H-I-V-A and then Ayadurai, A-Y-Y-A-D-U-R-A-I, for example, he's a, a, a medical uh, doctor, a scientist, uh, a computer scientist, super genius brown guy, uh, invented email, right? And if you listen to other doctors from around the world and naturopaths and scientists, they all have gone crazy going, oh my God, you've got us all panicked about this. No problem. We'll put our big, you know, super brains to work. And they've come up with a lot more than wash your hands, stay away from people and stay home, right? There are all sorts of other solutions, right? Like how about boosting your immune system? Why cost the government trillions of dollars in revenue when you shut down the economy, make us all broke, try and save 100,000 from the flu and maybe kill 10 million with a depression, right? Why? Why lose trillions in revenue? Why pay out billions or trillions in bailouts to try and barely keep people on welfare or barely keep businesses open or barely keep banks solvent, right? And so on. Or, or have the government as part of communism buy everything, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take your mortgage. We'll take your house. No, you're worried about paying for it. We'll own it. Oh, you will take your business, right? No problem. You, you, you're worried about your business. We'll own it. We'll print money. We'll buy it. We'll own it. Now we own everything. That's fascism, the merger of corporate and government power. Or communism, same thing, just another version of fascism, right? With, you know, some, some leftist, uh, you know, uh, leftist greens on the side, right? Whatever, same thing. It's all the same thing, right? And so, um, you know, why do that when instead you could simply boost our immune systems, right? You could say, hey, we're not going to lose billions in this and pay out billions in that. We're going to spend a few million or a few billion, depending on where you live, what country you are, on vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, uh, zinc with hydroxychloroquine, which has cured hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of really sick patients with COVID-19 symptoms, right? Maybe not even COVID-19, but with COVID-19 symptoms. Um, but it works. It cures them. Or there's a dewormer drug, uh, a dewormer out there, which has come out and, and people have tested it on COVID-19 because people are taking it seriously, right? We all are taking this seriously and we all are learning and sharing a lot because you know, it seems like our entire lives and futures depend on it. So fine, a lot of people are around the world, a lot of smart professionals, a lot of smart lay people, even if you're Joe or Jane Canadian or Joe or Jane whoever, anywhere in the world, before any major health decisions, before they say therapy is not going to work, physiotherapy is not going to work for that problem, you need surgery, typically you get a second opinion, right? Even if they're a doctor. Even if they're up, Dr. Evil says, oh, yes, you know what you need to do? Wash your hands, stay away from people, and stay home. That's what you can do about the flu. You're like, okay, Dr. Evil, you're a doctor. I want to check with Dr. Good. What does Dr. Good have to say? Right? Because this is a serious health concern. So I might get a second opinion. Right? And there's all sorts of second opinions out there that can supplement this. Right? Which is why my flyer would be way better than this. Right? If I had this much space and this much money and this much time, right? You would learn everything you need to know to do for the flu and a lot more. Right? You would be the healthiest person in the world, 
right? Or the healthiest you could ever, the healthiest you've ever been in your life if I had this much real estate to deal with a major health crisis. This much real estate, and I could send this to every single home in uh, Canada, right? If I could, If I could do this, right? It would have a bunch of information. It would have some explanations. Stupid, laugh, smart, enjoy, use it, right? If I was, you know, the Canadian Medical Association, the Ontario Medical Association, right? You know, and I could do a much better job than this by giving you a bunch of great tips, a bunch of great info, great websites, and great people you could check out for yourself. And then you, as a smart person, can make a smart decision about what to do for your health because you have different things to think about so you can think for yourself, right? And stupid laugh, smart enjoy, right? That simple. So... What about the second opinions? What about the other doctors? What about the other medical professionals that can say do more than just the bare minimum that we've been told over and over again every day for months? Why aren't they consulted? Why isn't their information taken seriously and vetted? Trust but verify. You're like, all right, you seem like you're you're not lie, trying to lie. You seem like you're trying to be honest, right? You may not be telling the truth, but at least you're not trying to lie. So no problem. I'll take you seriously and I will trust but verify and I will verify your claims about vitamin C being good for a flu, which we've known for decades, right? Or vitamin D, right? Everyone locked down in self-isolation. How are you gonna get enough sunlight to boost your immune system, right? A lot of times that's why uh, people get sick in the winter, not enough sun. Go out, get some sun, get some fresh air, sun you know, boosts your immune system, your white blood cell count starts regenerating, anything that shows up, not just a flu, but, you know, toxins from cars belching out, you know, smoke, you know, uh, other stuff in the environment, other pollutants and so on, dander, pollen, blah, blah, blah. All this shit is constantly assaulting us. And our immune systems are constantly cleaning it out. We are a germ and virus and bacteria factory. We are, they say, you know, people have said a dog's mouth is cleaner than a human's mouth right? Because the dogs, what well, it's, it's, it's designed to be cleaner because they use it all the time to lick this, lick that. So it's got stuff to clean it better. Whereas a human's mouth, we're not always licking stuff. We're not always our mouths open. We're not sniffing and licking things all over the place. So we don't have the systems to clean our mouths as effectively. We have to brush our teeth, whereas dogs have a better system for that, right? We are full of viruses and bacteria already. And, 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 and yet, um, and, and yet we're supposed to be paranoid about this as opposed to getting stronger and healthier. And that's why this is a glossy piece of garbage. That's why this is the uh, Communist Canada. Communist Canada government wastes taxpayer money on a glossy piece of garbage. That's what this is because this is the best they could do after getting the entire resources of the government and plus the world when it comes to sharing best practices worldwide to deal with this. This is the best they could do, which means it's bullshit, right? And this is something that we need to, to know and expose, right? So when you get this, you can't just say, oh, thank goodness, our government's working hard for us. You know, they, 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 they're, they're doing the best they can. That's amazing. You can go, no, no, they're not working that hard for us. They're working that hard. They're working really hard to control us. Um, and they're, they're not doing the best they can for us because if that's the best they can do, they're liars. They're liars. Right? Anybody can go on the internet and look for stuff about the flu. Anybody can see. Not, trust experts who question experts, right? Doctor says this, other doctor says that, other doctor says this, other naturopath, nutritionist says this, that, or the other, right? And they could have done all that. And they could have come up with, okay, look, we've, seen, we've, 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 we've talked to some of the best doctors in Canada. We've talked to some of the best doctors around the world. We've looked at solutions in different countries. You know, we are optimistic we, that we can get past this soon. You know, blah, 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 blah. And here is a distillation of the best practices when dealing with this global pandemic worldwide. The very best. Yes, wash your hands, stay away from people, stay home. But there's also more we can do. But they're not doing that, right? They're not doing that. These... Uh, medical agencies are not doing that. And so we need to do that for ourselves and for each other. And that's what I recommend. Um, and there you have it. Um, so see more in the description below, a bunch of helpful websites out there to check for yourself about the latest that's going on, talking about either corruption involved in the response to this process or 
uh, health information, which can also help you boost your immune system. I've done a lot recently because I have taken this seriously. I'm eating a lot healthier. I'm taking the right things, the vitamin C, uh, the quinine, tonic water, the vitamin D, the zinc or whatever. All that stuff is getting out there and that will lead to more people getting it, but with supply chain issues and shortages and, and longer and longer lines for less and less goods here in communist Canada in other places that are adopting these communist control systems around the world, um, it's going to get tougher and tougher. Now, this doesn't mean run and hoard and panic and say, screw everybody. It means we've got to have a more holistic approach to pushing back against all this shit. And I hope videos like this help. And there you have it. So BK for manforwars.com. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, uh, get in touch with questions, answers to work together or financial support. See more below. Otherwise, I hope this helps and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.